Today we are rolling out pie dough, pre-baking a tart shell and unmolding our beautiful finished product. I roll my dough straight from the fridge. This ensures that my butter won't melt and stick when I roll. To make cold butter more pliable, we'll use Julia Child's method of giving this dough a good beating. Whack it evenly from one side to another. Rotate 90 degrees and whack again. Rotate and whack. Rotate and whack. Make sure your whacking is even and systematic to maintain the same thickness throughout your dough. My dough is now the size of a thick pancake, so I think we've beaten it into submission. Let's squish together any little cracks and start rolling. When you roll, start already on the dough, not on the counter, and rotate the dough after every roll. Roll, rotate. Roll, rotate. The reason we're constantly rotating our dough is to keep even thickness and shape and to solve sticking problems when they just start instead of when the dough is thoroughly glued to your counter. If you get stuck, unstick your dough with a pastry scraper, move it, sprinkle the work surface with flour, and keep on rolling. There is a misconception that too much flour makes the dough tough. Too much flour in the dough makes it tough. The flour that's on the outside doesn't develop a gluten network, so it's harmless. If you get excess flour on the dough when you are done, brush it off with a pastry brush. Let's see if it's big enough for our tart pan. Looks good! Our dough didn't crack, because in the videos everything always goes perfectly. But I want to show you what to do if it does. Say we have this crack. Dampen your finger and dab one side of the crack. Press the crack together, sprinkle it with flour, and pat together again. Roll it with a pin, and it's as good as new. Your dough will stick underneath, but that's easy to fix. Unstick it with a pastry scraper, a little flour underneath, and you're good to go. Let's brush extra flour off our dough. Fold it in half, scrape your counter clean, and brush off the dough on the other side. Fold the dough into quarters, fit into the center of a tart pan, and unfold. When you fit it into the corners, lift it up to avoid stretching and press with your fingers into the sides of the pan. Trim with a pastry scraper, leaving a half inch overhang. Or better yet, use kitchen shears. Turn this overhang back inside the walls to reinforce them. This overhang is not necessary for pies, but on shallow tarts, the sides can shrink almost in half, and this reinforcement helps them stay tall. Your dough should stick out about a quarter inch above the edge of the pan. For best results, refrigerate the dough for at least 20 minutes at the stage before baking. Some recipes will ask you to pre-bake your dough before filling. This is called blind baking and is most necessary for quiches and other custard fillings. Here's how it works. Line the dough with parchment paper and fill with dry beans or some other weight. This will keep the dough from puffing up. Reach into all the corners with your fingers until the parchment paper stands straight up. Getting the beans into all the corners is important to help your shell keep its shape. By the way, you can reuse the beans as many times as you want. Mine are 12 years old and have moved houses with me. I call them my lucky beans. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees with a rag set in the bottom third and a rimmed baking sheet for at least 20 minutes. Put the tart on a hot sheet and bake until you just start to get color on the sides, about 18 minutes. Get out the beans and gently press the dough with a fork to prevent the bubbles from forming. You want to depress the dough, but not push all the way through. Continue baking your dough until it's desired doneness for your recipe. 
Here I have an apple grape tart. Let's invert the bowl, set the tart on top, and let the sides drop. Then slide the tart off the pan bottom and onto the board. If you want all your baking to be easy as pie, don't forget to subscribe to Helen's Kitchen channel. And if you're ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.